Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to start on the next chapter, which is defining the I/O points of the equipment list. So I'm going to go diving deeper into the equipments based on the I/O points. What is what should what are the I/O points that should be there, and what are the I/O points that uh, is good to have, which can be a high level point. So. That in a way, in this uh, fundamental of BMS training, will help you to later scale down your unnecessary I/O points that you have sized, or to identify any of the I/O points that you have missed out during your BMS uh, conceptual design phase. All right, so this whole process in this chapter is to help you to define out your I/O points based on your equipment list. And we start off here with uh, issue. So the issue, as you can see in here, just to go through, is that we have the DO, DI, AO, AI uh, that we have covered earlier in um, our conceptual design in the earlier chapters. So we are split it up into two sections. One is basic and one is detail. So for basics, uh, the basic information, essential information that we should have from the ASU. So we refer that as the, um, the basic I.O. points. Details are not standard I.O. points, but I would say the engineers should factor it. It's good to have. So uh, these are some of the additional considerations to look into. Though they are not critical, uh, points, but I would say is that uh, some of the points to be uh, added in will be uh, some buffers for uh, the point the point counts later on. So allow me to go through with you uh, what are the different points that has been allocated for ASU. First, we have the start stop, which is using digital output for controlling, uh, taking in the status of uh, on off status of the issue, taking in status for um, trip alarm, taking in status for whether is it manual or auto, taking in the status digital for the filter dirty alarm, taking in anode value of the on coil temperature, taking in the value via analog for the written adduct temperature, off coil temperature, Supply water temperature, return water temperature, all these are analog input. Taking in the value, analog input for carbon dioxide. Air duct static pressure, these are analog values. Water flow rates, far feedback, all these are analog values. Now, just by this table in here, you can see some of them are good to have. Like example, on coil temperature, it's good to have to allocate for them. Off coil temperature, supply water temperature, return water temperature. All these are details, right? The water flow rates, the valve feedback. Likewise, for on the one on the right, the written air humidity, set it as detail, motorized control valve, and a lot of output to control the to regulate the, the dampers, the fresh air dampers, modulations, variable speed drives. And also that we cater in a detail point for variable speed drive, power meters, BTU meters. So in the example in here, like the on coil temperature, we set it with an analog input. So which means that the, it gives us more clarity later on when we want to look into the on coil and off coil comparison. So example, the on coil. Uh, that we have factored in, in here is the supply temperature um, to the cooling coil. So the on coil temperature and the off coil temperature actually refers this to will be the air temperature. Now the off coil temperature is a temperature that comprises of the written air from the adduct minus of the temperature collected from the room itself. Then the off coil temperature it is the only temp is referring to the temperature 
that is in the room. Okay, so off coil temperature is referring to the temperature that is in the room because it minus off the the the, the return air duct, the, the temperature from the return air duct. Okay. Now the on coil temperature comprises of a mixture of fresh air and return air temperature. Okay, so the on coil temperature is a mixture of fresh air and return air temperature. So the fresh air comes from the motorized sample. Right. So that in a way you can see the on coil temperature is a mixture of the fresh air plus the temperature in the uh, the temperature of the air in the room itself. Next is that uh, for the supply water temperature plus the uh, return water temperature itself and also plus the water flow rate, this will give you information. This tree will give you the information of your BTU site. Okay, so this is uh, if you want some detailed information, you can make use of these three values in here. Likewise, for carbon dioxide sensing, carbon dioxide sensings are commonly deployed in the indoor, uh, indoor air quality uh, premise, indoor premise. So the uh, carbon dioxide sensing is tied closely with the uh, this one, the fresh air damper modulation. So if the CO2 level is high, this fresh air damper will open up. So once it open up, you will bring in fresh air. So CO2 sensing is uh, more for uh, indoor air quality, and um, it's been tied closely with this uh, fresh air. So what it does is that you have the output here to modulate the damper. Apart from this is that the variable speed drive. Um, you will need to cater uh, an output all by the high level interface here. OK, so I think nowadays the, depending on the selection of the variable speed drive, most of them currently in the market is running on high level interface. So if it's running on high level, high level interface, uh, you can choose like not bars or Backnet protocol to communicate with the drives. Digital power meters uh, also nowadays are running a lot, a lot of them running on high level interface as well, on my bus. Uh, likewise, for the um, BTUs, BTU meters, so like the filter 30 alarm, they come with this. Uh, HIPAA filters, so it gives you the um, alarm signal as well. Okay, so this is the uh, dirty filter alarm that you need to cater in for the digital input. Uh, commonly used in hospitals, healthcare, where it uses HIPAA filters. Uh, if you're working on an application like this, then you need to cater for the dirty filter alarm. Um, some heaters, they are three stage heaters. You can use a uh, digital output to control um, the different stages. The fil dirty filter alarm digital input status, uh, pretty much uh, you just need to cater for uh, one, one filters would be one alarm that is needed. All right, but of course, some of them will come with, come with more than one. Some of them they come with uh, two to three. So these are some of the, the things that you need to check in terms of the uh, filters. For example, if you select a HIPAA filters, uh, how many alarm status that you need to cater the correct number of the points, digital input points. Now here is a FCU table on the left. And on the right is the uh, VAV. 
variable uh, air volume, variable air volume, right? So for FCU, the difference between the FCU and the ASU is that the ASU uh, uses uh, more of an analog base, whereas FCU uses more of or on off status to control the motorized valve. So that you can see in here, the control of the valve is mostly for digital. Right. So for uh, ASU, if it's uh, using for ASU because you need to modulate the motorized valve, then you need to, instead of putting a DO, digital output, you need to change it to a uh, analog output for ASU. Now the basic of fan coils are usually more focused towards room room setup, room temperature control. So uh, that is why uh, instead of uh, focusing into the, the return air. So the, here are some of the um, FCUs that are commonly used. There are also FCU used in the return air uh, duct as well. Okay, so next thing here is that to put some emphasis into uh, some detail points in terms of the supply chill water temperature, return chill water temperature. All these uh, could be set as a detail function where you have the chill water flow rate, the return air temperature sensors, and the BTU meters. Right, so all these are in relation. Right. And also uh, coming to the variable air volume. So the, the variable air controllers in here um, can be running on the, the backnet, long works, mod bus, system, high level interface. Well, some of the basic points that is needed, like uh, for VAV systems, you will need to cater in for air temperature input, analog input for room temperature, for flow rate, differential pressure, all these are analogs, position of, uh, of your dampers, VAV dampers, and also controlling of your VAV dampers, which is uh, using analog output. Okay. So uh, here is the some models. I think these models uh, are to factor in is that you need to have a gateway. So some model numbers of a gateway for the VRV system. Okay. So if I were to go through a VRV uh, FCU, so the, you have the on-off status, which is digital input alarm status, your operating mode, whether it's in cool mode or fan mode, in analog status, operation mode setting, analog output, your state, the values of your temperature in the room, alarms, you need to cater for digital input, thermal on status, digital input, indoor fan speed status, analog input, and indoor fan bit setting because you need to set it. So you put it as a uh, analog output and also on off operation or uh, using um, digital output. This for indoor unit for VRVs, for outdoor, then uh, you need you have a digital input for the compress uh, for the compressor as well. All right. So the DI to uh, get the status of the compressor. Okay, so here is the external device. Huh? So you can see there's the uh, outdoor unit in here. Outdoor unit. Then number two is that we have it all connects um, back in here into a VRV gateway. All right. So the VRV gateway then connects um, to the IP back, uh, IP backbone using here in a situation of backnet.
And uh, from the bottom, that's where the additional BMS system can also be connected into the IP backbone by running on the backnet system. Here is a, a example of a chiller water system. So if uh, the run through is for the chiller water system will be digital output for start stop, authorized valve for the digital uh, output to control the open and close, digital input for on off status, trip alarm, auto manual selectors, refrigerant, refrigerant leakage alarm for digital input. This is detail. Um, fail to start alarm, digital input, your valve position status, and the rest are actually detailed. So details one are like the chill water supply temperature, return temperature, condensed water supply temperature, return temperature, and your pressure, supply and return pressure. So all these are in analog value. Your condensed water supply pressure and return pressure, and also your true water flow rate in analog input, condensed water flow rate, analog input, digital power meters, all these will be high level interface, all right? So even your true uh, chiller microprocessor, you have to cater a high level interface points in here. A chiller plant. So for um, a chiller plant room, likewise again, the, that be need to cater uh, somehow similar to what we have seen earlier, right? So uh, there'll be a segment in here on the left, which is for chill and condensed water pump. And on the right will be for the cooling towers. OK, so next in here, you can get to see the um, basics points that is needed for a chill water uh, pipe heater. So mostly the uh, analog input status for your supply temperature, return temperature and flow rate of your chill water. Some of the detailed features for your differential pressure. And also for uh, the makeup of the expansion tank. So high level, low level uh, of the tank uh, alarm. These are some of the status that need to cater in, and also for the digital uh, water meter for the detailed status, and also for the water pipe header itself. The condensed water pipe, you will need to cater in the supply and return of both temperature and pressure, and also for your flow rate. Okay, the rest of it, uh, like the heat recovery wheel. Okay, as you can see in here, the exhaust fan, DI status for your trip alarm, room temperature, this one you had set it for uh, analog input, and also for your fans for your car park system, mostly the uh, digital input, DO for the on off of the fan, and also for uh, car park fans, uh, you need to cater in the sensors for your carbon monoxide that's generated by the, um, the vehicles. So the fans are like the smoke fresh air fan and also the smoke steel fan. So smoke steel fan is considered as uh, SSF used in a car park and also the smoke fresh air fan which is S F E F. Okay. And uh, below we have the pressurized fan, which is the LPF, where you have the uh, lobby pressurized fans and also the staircase pressurized fan in here. So you need to cater in the on off status and trip alarm as well, mostly for monitoring purpose. Um, the fan for the, the exhaust room, well, this one will be more for the exhaust air fans. So this one doesn't mean for EAF, right? Commonly used in a uh, chiller plant room. Exhaust fans could be the used in also um, electrical room. In electrical room, they use exhaust fans as well. So depending on the room type, heat recovery will mostly 
not so common unless you're doing more for like healthcare, then there are occasional times where you will get to see a uh, heat recovery wheel system, then you need to cater for, for this set of IO points. Okay, so I have come to another Q&A session. So we will have a pause in here and then feel free to unmute your mic, post your questions so that we can show everyone of you is still uh, aligned uh, with the chapters that I'm going 